Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous videos, we were studying about linear operators and their spectral properties. And in detail, we had studied about compact linear operators, right? But from this video onwards, we shall be studying about adjoint operators, which are also linear operators. So this is some uh, another section of this uh, theory of linear operators. So first of all, before moving further on to studying the spectral properties of a joint operator, let us first understand and review what is the adjoint operator, what are their properties, and then we'll, we shall be moving on to the main content of this adjoint linear operator. So we call operator T, which is defined on some Hilbert space, right? to the same Hilbert space. So this we have operator T as a bounded linear operator, which is defined on a complex Hilbert space, then Hilbert adjoint operator. So we define this by the same operator with the symbol cross, or sometimes people use this star instead of cross. So it is up to us what whichever notation we wanted to use. Just mention that this either cross or the star, this represent the adjoint operator. So in my case, I'm using this cross notation. So here they say, if you have T as a bounded linear operator on a given complex Hilbert space, then the corresponding Hilbert adjoint operator, this is defined as an operator which satisfies this property. Now, what is this property? This property tells us that for every member X and Y from the Hilbert space H, if we have the inner product of T X and Y, so it should be equal to the inner product of X and T cross Y, right? So this is the property of a joint operator. So now let's, uh, in this definition, I have used two words. One is the Hilbert space and another one is the inner product. So let's see uh, and review what are these and then we shall be moving forward on to the results of these adjoint operators. So first of all, let me define what is a Hilbert space. Hilbert space is nothing but it is the inner product space which is complete in itself. So this is known as Hilbert space as in the case of uh, normed spaces, whenever we have a complete normed space, we call that space to be the Banach space. In a similar manner, when we have a vector space which is associated with the inner product, that is the definition for this inner product, a vector space which is uh, associated with this inner product, that is known as the inner product space. And if that space is complete in itself, that is known as the Hilbert space. So how can we define this inner product? Inner product, that is a mapping and it is taken from uh, this Cartesian product of two vector spaces. Say we have a vector space X, another vector space as X. We take the Cartesian product. That means we have two members here, two spaces here. One is this one, one is this one. So first element is, is taken from this first space every time and the second element is taken from the second space every time. So we take one member from here, another member from here, we apply the property of inner product and we obtain a member which is present in this K. Now what is this K? This is the associated field with that vector space. That is the scalar field and usually it contains numbers. So we are taking two vectors uh, and we are obtaining a number from it that provides us inner product and moreover it should follow these properties. What are these properties? It tells us that if we take three vectors from the space x, say x, y and z, then in that case the inner product of x plus y with z, it should be equal to the inner product of x with z plus the inner product of y with z. So that is how we open up this plus. The second property, if we have alpha as some scalar quantity taken from the field and we have x as vector, so the inner product of alpha x with y, that is nothing but alpha into the inner product of x and y. The third property, it tells us that the inner product of x and y, that is equal to the complex conjugate of the inner product of y with x. 
So that means when we wanted to commute these two vectors x and y, we can do that by using the complex conjugate here. So that means you just reverse these vectors with themselves and then you perform the complex conjugate. So basically in case of real numbers, we have the inner product of x and y that is simply equal to the inner product of y with x. Why? Because on applying this complex conjugate property, because being reals, the numbers would not change and the vectors would also remain the same, right? And the fourth property says we have if we take the inner product of the same member with the same member, that is always a positive quantity. It is never negative. So it is either greater than zero or it is equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, then this would be possible whenever x is equal to zero. So that means whenever x is equal to zero, we have the inner product of the same member with the same member as equal to zero. So if a vector, if the vectors all the vectors of the space x they follow this property and we have the mapping defined in such a way then that space become the inner product if that inner product space is complete in itself that is a hilbert space right so let's now move forward to study the properties for a joint operator let's review all the properties for a joint operator so the first property here, it tells us about the Hilbert adjoint operator. We can simply call this operator to be adjoint operator also, right? So it tells us that this operator T cross relating to the linear operator T, this exists. This would surely exist for a bounded linear operator and it is unique. We can only define one of such kind, one operator of such kind, and it is a bounded linear operator with the norm same as that of norm T. And it is bounded operator whose norm is equal to that of the uh, mapping, the linear operator T only. Here in this case, H1, if we consider H1 and H2 as two Hilbert spaces, so in general, we can define the vector, uh, the uh, not the vector, but the operator, linear operator T from Hilbert space H1 to H2. They could also be same spaces, but for the sake of generality, we are taking two different Hilbert spaces. So we are taking one operator to be the S defined on to the same Hilbert space H1 to the H, uh, Hilbert space H2. And then we are taking another operator defined from the Hilbert space H1 to the Hilbert space H2. Both of them are bounded linear operators and alpha is any scalar. Then in that case, we have the property that if we apply or if we take the inner product of T cross Y with X, that is nothing but Y the inner product of y with t of x. So that means we have shifted this thing to here and uh, this t cross has now been replaced with the operator t here, right? So when we shift the operator from the first entry to the second entry, so basically we have a shift in t cross to t or t to t cross. So that is the same thing. The third property here, it tells us that if we take the adjoint operator of the sum of two operators, so S plus T adjoint operator, that is equal to taking the adjoint operators first and then adding these operators. So this is basically the, writing the same thing. The next property, it tells us that now we have alpha as some scalar here. Alpha is some scalar here, right? So when we take the a joint operator for the operator alpha into the operator t. In that case, it is alpha bar t cross. Now, alpha being a scalar, it could also be complex in nature. If it is complex, we have to perform its conjugate here. If it is real, there is no issue. We can simply write alpha because in case of reals, alpha is equal to uh, alpha bar, right? So here we have alpha t cross that is equal to alpha bar t cross. This is the next property. 
Another property here take, tells us that when we perform the adjoint operator twice on a given linear operator, we obtain the same operator back. So T cross of cross that is equal to T only. Next property it is the norm of T cross T that is equal to the norm of T T cross and basically this thing is equal to the norm of T T uh, so this is equal to the norm of t and t. So we can write this thing to be the norm of t squared. Correct. The next property here it tells us that when we perform t cross t and it is equal to 0 in that case the operator has to be equal to 0 and conversely also if the operator is 0 then t cross t is always a 0 quantity. And the last property is equal to, uh, states that whenever we take the adjoint operator of the operator st, that is equal to t cross and s cross. And here we are assuming that both the spaces, they are taken to be equal. So we are taking and uh, or we are defining the operators s and t onto the same uh, space, spaces. Basically, these operators, they are defined on the same spaces. So, in that case, st cross, that is equal to t cross s cross. So, it is just the reversal here. So, this property just reverses the order here. If we have st uh, and we are taking its adjoint operator, that would be equal to the adjoint operator of t composed with the adjoint operator of s, right? Next, let us define another definition involving the self-adjoint op linear operator. So let's see what is the self-adjoint linear operator. So when can we define the adjoint operator to be the self-adjoint operator? So if we have some bounded linear operator defined onto a Hilbert space H, then that is known as self-adjoint and it's another name that is the Herbitian operator. Uh, we call this operator to be self-adjoint whenever we take the adjoint operator and that is nothing but same as that of the given linear operator. So in this case, we have the formula and the formula here becomes equal to Tx, the inner product of Tx with y that is equal to the inner product of x with Ty. So basically, otherwise we would have, uh, we would have Tx the inner product of Tx with y, it was equal to the inner pro product of x with T cross y, right? Now because T cross is same as T, so we have this property here. So now let's move forward to see some basic results on the self-adjoint linear operators. So the first result here, it tells us that whenever we define T as a bounded linear operator on the given Hilbert space, then T is called self-adjoint operator whenever the inner product of Tx with x is real for every element x present in the Hilbert space H. So if we are given T as a self-adjoint operator, then this inner product is real. And in the second case, in addition to being this inner product of Tx with x as a real, if moreover the given Hilbert space is complex in nature, then we can write its converse. Then we can say the given operator T that is a self-adjoint operator, right? So this is the first result on self-adjointness. Next result is about the product of two linear operators. Suppose we have two linear operators, then the, their product is also self-adjoint whenever we have two operators which commute with each other. So if we have S and T as these two linear operators, linear bounded operators, which are also self-adjoint, then the product would be self-adjoint whenever ST is equal to TS or whenever we have uh, st is equal to ts then the product would be self-adjoint and conversely whenever the uh, product is self-adjoint then we have this commutativity with us. The next result tells us about sequences of self-adjoint operators. In many cases we would see that we have some sequence say t1, 
T2, T3 and so on of bounded self adjoint linear operators. Then in that case, if suppose the sequence is converging to some operator say T, in that case, what can we say about this operator T? What can we say about this limit T? Is it also self adjoint or what? So this is uh, obtained through this result here. It tells us that given Tn to be a sequence of bounded self adjoint linear operators, which is defined from the Hilbert space H to the Hilbert space H. And if we suppose that the sequence Tn that converges to the limit point T, that means when, I, when we take the norm of the operator Tn with T, it tends to zero, where this quantity represents the norm. And it is defined on the linear operators, which are defined on the Hilbert space H to H. Then in that case, according to this thing, what can we say about the limit operator? The limit operator, according to this result, is also a bounded self adjoint linear operator, which is defined on the given Hilbert space. So these are all the results about self adjoint linear operators. I hope you understood and have reviewed all the concepts relating to this Hilbert spaces. Uh, a joint operator, self a joint operator. If you have any, any more doubts, you could look back and go back to your textbook and refer to all the topics. Until now, uh, we'll be discussing uh, next the spectral properties of these operators. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.